let's have a think about all of this. Um, let's have a look at some actual examples of equations for motion. So I'm going to sub point this. We're going to call these the time equations. I want to think about the three quantities that tell me everything about how an object is moving in a kinematic sense, and what are those quantities in tuna motion? Three quantities. Distance, velocity, acceleration. Okay, so very close. Displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Okay, so yes. So if I say displacement, okay, um, how will I define this? Now there's a variety of different things I can do. I'll start with a very, very simple case first. I just think, I want to think about this graph, okay, this graph here, okay. Now being that you don't have any um, markings for scale, you don't know what the frequency is, you don't know what the amplitude is, so I need to state this as generally as I can, right? So what might an equation for that be? Let me take us. So I'm going to have to have sine in there, but you don't know the amplitude, right? The amplitude of this is already 1. Right, do you agree? So if I want my amplitude to be anything, I'll just stick a I'll just stick a coefficient out the front, a constant coefficient. Okay? And then what are you gonna have in here? Okay, now for starters, this is all in terms of time, right? These are the time equation. So there's going to be a T in here somewhere. But you don't know the frequency of this, right? So at the moment, the period of this um, particular motion will be two pi seconds, minutes, hours, whatever it is, okay? If I wanted to change that, how would I adjust the frequency of this? Another constant. Okay, I need a new one. I need a new constant in there. So now, you'll notice I've left a blank. We're kind of done for this particular one, right? I start at the origin. That's the origin is my center of motion, and that's it, okay? I'm going to extend this just a little bit. I might not begin at the origin. I might have this amplitude and this frequency, but maybe I start at, say, one of the extremes, right? Or maybe I start sort of halfway through the motion, okay? To change that, that's moving my graph backwards and forwards, and that will just change my starting position. So therefore, I'm going to introduce a phase, okay? So this is one example. Um, clearly, I could have written this as cosine, but it would just be a different alpha, yeah? So I'm going to not bother writing that because you're just going to repeat all of this stuff. Okay? All right, now, despite my, um, my dislike of the notation, generally speaking, because it's ambiguous and all that kind of thing, or easy to mistake for other things, because in this context you meet this dot notation a lot, I'm going to call the velocity x dot, okay? When I differentiate, what do I get? A a yeah. This is just chain rule, isn't it? Um, your sine turns into cosine, that's your outside function. Your nt plus alpha contributes an n, that's your inside function. Okay. So there's my velocity function. And I want to go one more time to the acceleration function. Differentiate again. And what this is a trick, right? Come on, okay. Now, here's what's really interesting. I want to have a look at this last equation here because it's very, very important. When you have a look at this guy, you notice that it is very similar to what we started with, right? In fact, just to make it really obvious, and I'm lucky you all do this with me, if you take out a factor of negative n squared, all that gets left behind is a sine nt plus alpha, which is exactly how we defined the displacement function, right? So this, in fact, is minus n squared x. Okay, put a box around that, will you? This, this is a critical result. Saying the simple harmonic motion is, um, the defi is defined by, you know, one, a single sine function or a single cosine function. That's what this looks like. But really, this is far more informative. This is far more informative. I want you to come back to these rubber bands again with me, okay? What this is saying is that, remembering that we introduced n as just a constant, it's just a constant that tells you about the frequency, the, pe the, um, the period of this thing. If this is just a constant, then x double dot is some negative number. Remember, n is squared, so it must be positive. So negative n squared must be a negative number. Some negative number times x. So these things are proportional to each other. Do you notice that? And what does this mean physically? Okay, have a look here. 
I've got my object uh, and it's moving away from the center of motion. Okay, so here's my left hand. Okay, with my finger up. So that's my center of motion, and here comes my my other object over here. Actually, let me put an object in there. My whiteboard marker is my actual particle or whatever it is that's moving. Okay, as I move further and further away from the center of motion, in a particular direction, let's call this negative direction. Okay, because to the left. What does that tell me about the acceleration? When I'm right over here. The further you get away, the bigger this number gets, right? That means the bigger the acceleration gets in which direction? The other direction, right? Back towards the center, okay? Because if this number is negative, then the whole thing is positive. Does that make sense? Okay, so what's what happens. As you're going to here at a certain point, namely the um, extreme of motion, okay? That acceleration overcomes your velocity, okay? So it's like, oh, I stop. Stop, stationary point, stationary point, okay? So you stop, then you start to come back. Okay, now this point right here, at this point right here, when I'm sitting on top of the origin, okay? What does this equation here, right? Which, by the way, zero. it's a differential equation. It tells me, since the displacement is zero, Max. the acceleration must also be zero, yes? So there's nothing accelerating the object in any direction at that particular instant of time, okay? But just to rewind, remember where it came from. It came from over here, so as it passes by the origin, it's going really fast. It's going really, really fast. And that corresponds to the fact that the steepest parts of this graph are at the center of motion. Do you notice that? Steepest gradient, it's moving the fastest, okay? Okay, so then, just to finish it off, as I then go past, I'm now on the positive side, right? So x is positive, which means acceleration is negative, negative which of course sends you back in the other direction, and the restoring force perpetuates the motion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this guy here, again, remember when we had um, exponential growth in K, right? And we related the population with the rate of the population's change. That was a differential equation. And that told you what was going on. This is the differential equation for simple harmonic motion. Um, see, I did see the more No, no, I did it right. I did it right. There we go. Okay. Um, this governs what's going on. And a sine wave or a cosine wave will satisfy this differential equation. Okay. Now, I want to point out to you, oh, I didn't turn it on, but, and I didn't bring a bunch of these. Um, you have a simple harmonic motion on your reference sheet, on the extension one page, naturally. Okay? But what they do is they extend this just a little bit. Don't write this part down. But you remember, when I gave you the equations for population, temperature, whatever it is in exponential growth and decay. I gave you this. Remember that? What made it extension 1 growth and decay? What, what sort of crossed the line? The only thing that was different was a constant, right? So for example, something like, oh, I don't know, uh, B plus or B minus or any kind of combination of those. Okay. So we call this modified growth and decay. Okay? So this, for instance, um, if I had a negative sign here, it would be a temperature that's not going down to 0. It's going down to whatever you like. Now, I want you to remember, each of these had a differential equation that came along for the ride. Do you remember what it was? The first one's super easy. What was the first one? K it's just, K in this case, it, the K comes out front when you differentiate, and then you just get back that. Okay? But, and this is why it's extension one, the differential equation for this one is a little more complicated. Not a huge amount. What was it going to be? Do you remember? Do you remember this? Because okay, you differentiate and you don't just get back the same thing times a constant. Okay? Now you observe exactly the same kind of normal situation versus modified situation. You observe exactly the same thing here. What kinds of things have we taken into account so far? We've taken into account the extremes of motion, the amplitude. We've taken into account how quickly this thing moves, whether it's, it's a really slow oscillation or a rapid one. We've taken care of where you begin. Do you start at the origin? Do you start at an extreme? Do you start somewhere in between? <coughs> the one thing that we haven't changed is on the board. For all of the things that I've got here, the center of motion is the origin. Do you notice that? Okay. Your extremes of motion might be negative A and A, but right in between them is always going to be zero. Okay. So how do I change the center of motion? How do I change this equation? In exactly the same way that I changed this equation. It's just a constant. Okay. So, now you can write this one again. Uh, black. Um, 
different center of motion. So these guys, the center of motion is just the origin. But all you need to do to make this move about, you know, instead of x equals 0, how about x equals 1, or x equals negative 50, or anything you like, is to say x equals, well, let's just shift the thing, yeah? You told me b before, so I'll just go with b. OK? Now, when we go back down and we rehearse <coughs> the results, right? What's going to be the difference between the velocity function for this and the velocity function for this? What will be the difference? Nothing. There will be no difference, right? Because you'll differentiate. This constant is irrelevant, right? It's still the same motion. You just put it somewhere else, right? So it's still doing the. It's still fast when it's fast and slow when it's slow. So this will still be the velocity function, which means this will still be the acceleration function, right? But I can't do. <coughs> I can't do what I did here over here, right? Again, do you see you see why I drew the parallel? Okay, the same thing is going to happen. Let me pick up just by writing the second derivative. It's gonna be this. You pull out your factor of negative n squared, but at the same time, I don't want a sine nt plus alpha here. I actually want b plus a sine nt plus alpha in there. Yeah? So I'm going to add it. And then I'm going to subtract it. You're probably getting sick of this algebraic little trick by now, right? So what you have inside the brackets here is not x, but x minus b. x minus b. Does this look familiar? Okay. So same idea, same extension of this. And what you'll find now is that, yeah, perfect. That is exactly what you find on the um, reference sheet. Mm, they've written cosine instead of sine, but it doesn't matter. The only difference between those, as you notice, is alpha. Like which phase do you choose? That turns sine into cosine. Okay. So let me put it like this. Uh, this guy here and this guy here. With no explanation, because that's not what the reference sheet is about. Um, those guys you will find on the reference sheet. And to get this from here, you just think about your center of motion not being b, but well, for the value of b being 0. That's it. Okay.